you still have a consistent noise in this engine that will not go away. We, we switched everything out. So that's exactly... <laughs> you put your new lifters in and we hook a vacuum up to it. And now this guy here put something in my head now. So he wants to do a 508. Hell yeah. This is why I lose all my money! <laughs> Welcome back to another video guys. Oh, we got a beautiful day out here in Dirty Jersey. I mean, it's it's the last few days of November and it's 50 degrees out. 47, 50 around there between the little area. Not too shabby, man. I'm not complaining. I'm out here on my bike. I'm off from work today. Uh, and it feels great to be on tubes, baby. Um, what we got planned for today is to head up to the uh, Tour Custom Cycles shop. I got my lowrider S there. They're tweaking out a few things on it. So we'll get into that real quick once we get there. Um, I also want to give you guys, well, that might be its own video, but we'll do a little walk around of Mike's lowrider ST. He just finished installing um, a black chrome Bassani 2 in 1 pipe on there. The thing looks sick. It sounds great. So we, we might just do like a sound clip for that as well, but do a little uh, walk around on it. Um, and then we'll go into other things within the shop itself. Also, don't forget, if you are in the local area, New Jersey, New York, and you want to get some work done to your bike, um, Mike is offering a 10% off right now when you go to the shop, order the parts you want from him, and get the work done there. I finally got the GoPro on the Root Rock right now, so let me know how the whole vision is right here. The whole uh, view of the cockpit. I mounted the GoPro on maybe two weeks ago, so yeah, giving the Rule Rock some uh, some love and attention, and um, we'll see how it does as far as the motor vlogging with it. Let me know how the sound is. Let me know how the view is from here. Now, another reason why I'm heading over to the uh, Torque Shop is to just look over some parts and stuff that I might want to uh, that I might want to order for the bike. So I got the chromed out front forks, the front legs for this bike. Um, we're going to be chroming out the whole uh, bike in the front. So they're at home already. I got a brand new um, Screaming Eagle uh, air cleaner, uh, the big sucker that comes out. So we're going to be installing that all at once there. But what I want to know, what I'm trying to find out, and hopefully you guys can give me some of your assistance, some of your uh, your help and opinion. I'm thinking about maybe, A, if I'm going to be switching out the chrome forks, um, A, just doing the front suspension, go with Legends. But I have heard from a few people already that they had to already change them out twice because they keep blowing out. I'm not sure if that's a thing, so if anyone has Legends Front Forks, Front Fork Suspensions, let me know how that is. So, after hearing that, I'm like, alright, well, maybe I should just take the money and just get a different cam for the bike. So right now I'm running the Screaming Eagle cam, and it's good, but I want a bit more power. I want a bit more of a heavier noise. Um... You know, just, just that special sound that an SNS cam will make or a fueling cam. I'm leaning towards more fueling, but yeah, just that sound and uh, the performance that those cams are going to give you are uh, A1. So that's another thing. So I'm like, okay, well, should I go do the suspension or should I just go ahead and tear the bike apart again and go full on uh stage two so give me your opinion we're almost at the shop right here once we get in there we'll talk about it a little bit more with mike and see what he says but yeah man i don't know <laughs> i really don't know there's a lot of things that I, I got going on man i got like three unfinished projects so we, you know obviously we're still working on this um i kind of got a few parts for the uh fxr um the exhaust is something that i was in an order for last week for it and um, i just kind of been hesitant because I'm like, all right, well, which bike am I going to work on right now for the next month or two? Um, and I kind of want to have this bike set up already 
for the new year. At least, you know, mid-January for it to almost be done. I mean, are you ever done? <laughs> That's a real question. Are you ever done? Um, but there's just a few minor things I want to do to this bike. Like, uh, yeah, like a full-on stage two. Um, I need to order a new um, crash bar for the front. Doing a Santoro bar. I already have the Baja lights at home. The fog lights. The S1, what is it called? S something. Um, so we're going to install those on there as well. And um, rotors. And I, after I do that, then it's like kind of, you know, pretty much where I kind of want it to be at for the most part. There he is. So we got my bike here. Apart again. Anything yet or? Thinking is we've got a lot of play here. Yeah, but uh, how about the other ones that, that you've done? So we took this one apart at the same time. Uh huh. Uh, it's more apart now, but we measured the differences between the clearances on that one and that one, and you're over ten thousandths more. What? How's that even possible? Well, Harley. You know, sometimes uh, maybe the heads weren't machined. That's why some of these I th we think are louder than others. Maybe the heads aren't machined exactly the same. Maybe your prior problem where they lifted uh, wore out the insides of the perches where the rocker shafts are. But this is excessive play. How about the front one? So what we're going to do, we measured the 114 over there and the 114 here. We're going to order uh, a shim kit that is going to take up that slot. Zippers makes a, a shim kit that will go in here to take up that slack and bring it back down to the um, exact size. Factory is like I think 3 to 13 thousandths and you're at like 18. That's crazy. Mike, Michael will be back. He did all the measurements. I'm just going by what he said from before he... Before and then everything else is fine, right? Like the valve springs are good. Yeah, everything else is good. Damn. That's what he's taking. We can talk to him when he's back. He'll be back any minute. Ah, oh, damn it. So, yeah, as you guys know, we, uh... This bike has come apart quite a few times because of the, uh... Tapping noise that keeps occurring. And it's weird because they've done a few cam jobs on... Right, as you can see, a bunch of low rider asses in here and a bunch of uh, 114s. And um, <laughs> everything seems to be fine. We swapped out everything on the bike already, and it's it's just still tapping. And I'm guessing that's that's where it's from now. So weird. So if you guys have heard anything about this anywhere, please comment below. Let me know. We'll wait, we'll wait for the uh, master tech to get back to explain everything in detail. Where's your bike at? Oh, there it is. Sweet. Oh, that thing was so sick, man. So this is the the blacked out Bassani Pipe I was talking about. Look at this. It, it's, oh, man, it's beautiful. It's It goes with the bike so well. So nice, man. Love it. Nothing but low rider asses in here right now. All right, so what do we have here? So what we have here is uh, these are lifter holders. They're, they're tools made by a company called Nine Finger Fabrication. They make engine building tools. So this is a nice little, cool little thing to hold your lifters while you're working on the bike. They also have this jar um, that you put your new lifters in and we hook a vacuum up to it and it will suck the oil through the lifter, pump it up, and get all the air out. Oh, nice. They've got other things like, uh, these are bore covers so that when you pull the pistons off and, and your jugs, you can actually put this around the connecting rod and it goes and covers your engine uh, bore holes to keep any dust or anything out of there. The one tool, the other tools that come really, like really good, 
these come in handy. So if you've got like if you've got your lifter blocks there mm -hmm. and you're doing some cam work in the cam chest, these lifters will drop and lay on the cam. Right. So they make this cool little tool where you can stick it inside and what it'll do is it it's oh. magnets. So it'll actually hold your lifters. Right in place then. And as you do this, it kind of lifts them out. So now it'll hold your lifters in place so that they don't fall into the cam chest. Gotcha. They have some other things like exhaust port hole uh, cover-ups to cover up your exhaust ports, intake ports, sorry, intake ports, exhaust. Nine so, finger fabrication? Nine finger fabrication. Yeah. They hooked us up with all these tools, um, really cool stuff. If you go over to your bike, that's the other tool they have. Which is what? So we gotta keep, we gotta keep your bike apart tonight because we're waiting on parts. Oh, the covers. So they are, yeah, the little That's covers neat. so that nothing falls down in your engine. That's and pretty these neat. have a little, uh, it's a cool little uh, magnet. Let's see. Stay together. Um, before, before you take that one off, because he was explaining to me before, <laughs> you look so happy. <laughs> <laughs> he was explaining to me before. Then, you guys were busy filming shit, and you didn't tell me you had a rag full of fucking sockets, so wow. I picked up the rag, and now there's sockets everywhere. <laughs> Come on, back to work here. Let's get. <laughs> all right, so. Kicking them all over the floor. He was telling me that the rocker arms have too much play, right? Yeah. So I've. Uh, I haven't personally heard of a lot of information that that, that kind of uh, revolves around the rocker arms other than uh, checking for making sure one valve doesn't hang down lower than the other and that the valve springs aren't the, the greatest in these particular bikes. Um, what I'm looking for is you still have a consistent noise in this engine that will not go away. And we've already we've already done your, your cam kit and oil pump. And then I took it apart, redid it again, just to make sure that there was absolutely nothing wrong in there. Uh, I mean, I found like a, a torn seal uh, behind the oil pump. That's not great, but it's also not causing the noise. Uh, we moved our way up through the push rods and still can't find anything. And now we're at the rocker arms and the rocker arm end play is kind of what I'm looking at. And that's where we don't have a lot of information, at least out on the internet. Um, the one that we have apart over here if you do a, a, a side to side or an end play yeah. motion on those, um, I measured between four and five thousandths of end play on that other bike, and and yours has between fifteen and nineteen thousandths of end play between the exhaust and the intakes. Uh, so I'm kind of really, I'm really banking on the hope. I'm going to take the lower box. That it, the fact that it's just. A lot of space for it to rattle. Yeah, so I'm feeling that what you're hearing is your rocker arm shaft doing this gotcha. while the bike is running. Gotcha. In regards to whatever you know harmonization it has, but uh, I'm going to pull now the, the lower rocker box. I have the tool to do the the uh, the valve springs in this, so I'm going to pull the valve springs and check them out, uh, see if they're any bit different lengths or cracked, or if there's anything wrong with those, and that will rule out every little thing. And I even have shims on its way here for uh, for a twin cam and an Evo. So the shims are, they act like kind of like a, like a washer kind of, or? Uh, so shims they are, are a washer that's going to sit uh, between these studs where the, these studs here where the, where the rocker arm shaft lays and the rocker arm itself. And it's supposed to take up this side to side movement in here. Okay. Uh, I'm looking to try and get these down to, to three to four thousandths of end play instead of 19 thousandths. Yeah. Uh, and I really hope that, that that takes away all this noise because it's you know it's kind of it's kind of mind-boggling where that's coming from. But there's also this. It's annoying because it's like we, we we switched everything out. So that's exactly <laughs> no no. So, so so seriously, when when I turn it on, that's exactly what I hear. Yes, and it's it's all across the board. It's not just one. It's all four. Yep. Hmm. All right. So if anybody out there, guys, if if you are experiencing some noise or dealing with some of the stuff, this is a uh, we're gonna know we're, after we change everything up if that's if I that's mean, I definitely believe the valve springs should go just for the sake of performance and it, all the other fail rates that come from the springs. But as far as the noise goes, this is it. This is what I feel it is. Yeah. Yeah. What? Balls? What? 
<laughs> Your ball sit where? My ball sit the lifter ball. Oh, the anal. <laughs> What size anal bead that fits in your fits in your hole? <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Awesome, Good Mike. Way. Thank you. So, Fueling makes uh, a few different size lifters. Yeah. Uh, so. In the kit, they give you four or five different size lifter bore tools. Those look like beads? Yeah, they all have numbers on them. 8430. What is this for? So you, to measure your lifter bore. So if oh. the 8430 makes it through. Gotcha. So now if I take a larger one, it won't go through. Huh. So if that, <laughs> if that went through, then you know you got to order larger, larger lifters. So going back to the uh, the topic that we were talking about before. Anal beads? <laughs> no, not <laughs> anal beads. <laughs> um, doing the cam on my uh, on my road glide. Yep. So came in here, wanted to do the uh, uh, the whole fueling kit. What is it? Four seventy. Four seventy two. Four seventy two, as opposed to the four seventy five SNS that I got on my uh, low rider S over there. And now this. Guy here put something in my head now. So he wants to do a 508. Hell yeah. And I don't know, I'm like hesitant to do it. I'm not sure. So if anybody has a 508 on their uh, on their bike, let me know. Cause what are we doing with that? Uh, we're changing out springs as well. The whole kit. Yeah, it's everything. It's gonna be your oil pump, it's gonna be your support plate. Um, you're, you're now hand choosing the push rods and all that instead of just going for a straight up kit. And uh, with the 508, you get more power. I still suggest still doing the valve springs no matter what, regardless of the size of the cam. Even though 500 up, you should do it either which ways. But if you went with a smaller one, I would still do the springs. So you're there. You're just there. You gotta do the bigger cam, more power. You need your big bike to be faster than your small bike. This is how they sell me on everything in here. This is why I, buy, this is why I lose all my money. Yeah, so we're, uh, I'm so undecided, man. I don't know. Well, I'm gonna think about it for the next two days, and we're gonna order everything to change that whole bike out, make Just it into it. something a monster. Don't think about it. Just do it. Do it. You know what happened the last time that I did that? I didn't think about it. Just did it. What's that? All right, guys. That's gonna be it. If you are in the local area, like I said before, stop by, give Torque Custom Cycles a call. Doing a lot of work in here right now. A lot of cam jobs. And um, yeah, help me out. Help me decide which cam we're gonna go with. 475 SNS, 472 fueling or 508 fueling? 508. 508. You got two votes at 508. 508, cool. It says a guy who's trying to sell a 30 30 cam to everybody who walks in here now, too. Oh, that too. You should get that too. Well, <laughs> we should put both, both of them. The 30 30 is what? Uh, a 485. That, that's actually yeah. because it's the largest bolt-in cam without having to change valve springs. Huh. And that's the one that we put in. Can we turn it on? Yeah. Yeah, let, let's let everybody hear it. Because this one, they just finished installing a 3030 cam in here. Uh, so it's a 3030 cam with what? Uh, SNS pump and plate. Okay. So this guy actually bought the SNS 475 kit, took the cam, sold it, and then bought the 3030, and we used the rest of the kit. Gotcha. That sounds really good though, too. And imagine if you put a 201 in that. Yeah, Ooh. More power, dude. More power, baby. Pulled 130 foot pounds of torque out of that thing. <sighs> this is this is my brain right now spinning around. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> That's me, guys. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Like always, at the portion with you, right, safe, and enjoy the ride. You wanna give me a piece? Again? Give me a piece. Peace. No, give me a piece. Ha, 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 ha.